Two massive season-defining games coming up for you today. One in the league against the Barcelona team that have only won the Liga five times during the 25 seasons of this save. Or 26 seasons, whatever it might be. And the other, it's our old rivals from the Premier League, Man City, in the Champions League. Hello and welcome to part three of the Spanish leg of the Expedition of Gold. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode, we're at home against Barcelona in La Liga and then away against Manchester City in the Champions League. Since you were last with me, things have been going really rather well. Um, won all four games since you were last here um, and won them all convincingly as well. We seem to have discovered how to score goals. Worryingly, we kind of discovered that our old man striker, Aliam Dooley, um, is the man who's going to score him. He's got eight goals in seven games, but I st still struggle to see how we're going to get a full season out of him. Um, the £50 million or £40 million pound man, David Pieri Pierani, is looking more like a creator than a lethal finisher. Although three and five is not a bad goal return. It's not a Kev striker goal return. So we need to work on getting a few more goals out of him. But for as long as he's setting up on a plate for unduly while he's fit, then we'll probably be OK. Um, the league table did look very nice. There was a moment where we were top of it. Um, but now everyone else has already played today. Um, we could go top again with a win against Barcelona. Um, equally, they could go top with a win against us and we could stay down in fifth place. So still very early days and let's not get too bogged down in league tables at the moment. So our team for the Barcelona game, Oscar is really the only injury doubt um, at this point or injury problem. He's not a doubt. He's still going to be out for a month and a half at least with his broken ankle. So this is going to be our team that tries to push us back up to the top of La Liga. We've got Abdul Rahman in goal, a back four of Moldovan, Calvelo, Herrera and Rapage. Fantan, Arnett and Camajo are in midfield with Seb Ryan in behind Pirani and Umduli. Let's go score lots of goals against Barcelona. Um, for those of you keeping track, today's episode is, I mean, it's not brought to you by Pepsi Max. I'm just, it, it, it was cheap in Tesco. That's what I'm still drinking. Um, because letting you, if the if the V-neck T-shirt wasn't enough of a giveaway, um, I'm recording this episode like an hour after the last one because I'm away for the weekend. Oh, hang about, we've got text messages coming through. Just make sure we turn those off. Naughty Kev, I um, I was going to do Stone Cold Steve Austin rules and owe you all a beer, but I'm not. I mean, looking at my stats, like a third of you are under 18. I can't give you a beer anyway. We don't have beer on this channel. We have sugar-free soft drinks in black cans. And we've gone 1-0 down. And it's because of that text message. Let's see if this makes me feel better. Mmm. Synthetic sugary taste. Yum, yum, yum. We haven't even had a shot yet. This is not how Kev teams play. We have... I've listened to my assistant manager and I'm regretting it already because we're at home but we're playing counter-attacking and I don't know that I've ever done that before. In fact, the last time I messed around with counter-attacking was in the Champions League final last season. We all know how that turned out. So let's go control in this second half. Um, counter-attacking did us no good at all. We didn't even get a shot on target. Let's at least go down swinging and try and outscore them in this second half but we've really given them too significant a head start I imagine and as it stands right now they shoot up to top of the league we drop down to sixth and it is tight at the top at the moment I'm doing very nearly getting on the end of that cross and that would have changed everything if he'd have got his head onto that but it is very tight at the top of this league there's only four points separating first from seventh at the moment so we don't want to worry too much about it, but I am conscious of the fact that the teams who are pushing up the top of the table are the ones we would expect to be there at the end of the year. So we need to stay amongst them. Pirani gets his sixth goal of the season, and that reduces the gap between us and Real Madrid at the top to just two points and leaves us in a situation where if we can grab another goal without reply... We then do what Barcelona did and we jump up to the top of the league and can get all happy and excited because we're at the giddy heights of top of the league fairly early on. But as we showed with Bayern last year, we want to be we want to be pace setters. We want to get up there at the top of the league and then never give it up. Um, almost Rick rolled you there. Um, I've lost what I was saying, but I'm sure it was 
amazing. Let's just assume it was good. Uh, we'll bring New Had on because we don't play him very often. I'm, I'm just really reluctant. I don't mind playing an old man at centre back, and we play two of them most of the time. But I am reluctant to have a really old man at full back, at least on both sides. Rapaz is the old man on the right hand side, but at least he's still got some mobility about him. He's our captain. He's he can still get up and down that wing all game long. New Had not anywhere near as confident in his ability to be able to be mobile for an entire match he'll probably set up the assist for the winner now and prove me wrong but he just doesn't seem very mobile and for a Kev fullback that's a bit of a problem and we'll bring Wagner on for these last 10 minutes in the role where we know he can do a Wagner so let's stick him in behind the strikers hopefully the ball falls to him and he can grab a spectacular winner for us we have been worlds apart in the second half from where we were in the first half we have absolutely owned this second half only problem is we gave them that one half advantage. They grabbed their goal, and although we've been by far the better team in the final 45 minutes, it's not enough to secure us a win. But a draw against Barcelona is no bad thing, and being only two points off the top of the league, that's certainly not a disaster either. Now we find out how good we really are because we're going away from home against the team that those couple of seasons with, when we were at Tottenham aside have been dominating English football for quite some time. Let's go and play Manchester City. Just the one change for the City game. Then Wagner comes in at the expense of Fantan. Um, we are going defensive. Again, I trusted my assistant manager in the last game and then criticised him. I'm trusting him again now. He's telling me because we're away from home against Manchester City, who are one of the best teams in the world, then we should probably go there and defend. Now, if it doesn't work again, we never listen to him again. I might even sack him for being incompetent. Because, I don't know, it's not... I've never done defensive flexible. Normally, whenever we were, when we were at Tottenham and we were at Bayern, if we went defensive or counter, we'd always go structured. This assistant manager seems to be a lot keener on us being that bit more fluid throughout. So when we're on control, he t sticks us on fluid rather than flexible. Which, I'm listening to him at the moment. And it seems to be working against the weaker teams. However, against the better teams... As you can see, not working so much. Now, I don't know if this is because the tactics are wrong, which they might well be in this case, or whether it's just the fact that, and we said this on yesterday's episode as well, for the, we're just not as good as the, as the Tottenham team we had, as the Bayern team we had. We don't have the same quality of player at least not quality of player who are still in their prime. This is a little bit of a worrying situation. When you win your first two games in your group, and then by the end of the third game, you're still not in a qualifying position. Celtic are being a little bit more competitive than I expected them to be. It looks like we're all going and beating each other. Presumably, Celtic must have beaten Man City, because we beat Celtic and Malmo. So Celtic must have then gone and beaten City. Let's go to standard for the second half. I'm not messing around on this defensive nonsense anymore. I just, it doesn't suit the way, it doesn't suit the players that I go out and sign for us to go and be defensive. So we may as well play to our strengths, which is attacking, creating chances, and hopefully getting back into this game. Oh, Vatany. The amount of times that man has been the bane of my life. And that was a known goal, wasn't it? From Rapage, I think it was, yeah. Let's see what actually happened here, because it all happened very quickly. Vatane crosses. Becker, who we had on loan at Ipswich years ago. If that's Maximilian Becker, which I need to now check. Hold on. Man City. How do we look at Man City? Would he be number 16? No. But we can get into their squad this way. And tactics. There he is, look. We had him on loan at Ipswich. A long, long, was it Ipswich? No, we had him on loan at Tottenham. I didn't realise we had him on loan at Tottenham and then never played him. Why on earth would I loan a player from Man City when I was at Tottenham? What was I thinking? But I remembered the name and there you go. He came back from his unsuccessful loan spell at Tottenham and has been a regular at Man City ever since and has now scored against me. I could have sworn that it was Ipswich where he had him, but there you go. I was wrong. Um, Celtic are now drawing against Malmo, so... Despite the fact that we're now doing worse than we were when we were only third in the group, we've now moved up to second in the group because of the way football works. Football and mathematics 
Can, why have we made these substitutions in the 60th minute? I never make substitutions in the 60th minute. I'm all flustered by the fact that we've just been completely outclassed by a team I was used to getting the better of when we were hanging out in England still. But Vatany's in again, and we know how good he is. He's the only man in world football who can outscore Ira Baron and at least do it, on a, do it on a consistent basis. And he is making life difficult for us today. Oh, how it would, how nice it would be if we'd have been able to get Ira Baron into this team. Or even have Oscar fit. A fit Oscar would be fine. He'd be a difference maker. As it is, we're still at least a month away from him being fit. And when Amdouli's not, on form or when he's tired we really do struggle to find goals Pirani not sure that it was worth £40 million when you consider we've spent more on him than we spent on Malashev and Clemente combined last summer obviously the Bayern scouts were just a little bit better than the ones here mm. this is two episodes in a row where I've ended the episode feeling quite negative when in actual fact we're doing alright We're st- the Champions League's not a priority so let's not care about this result and we're doing fine in the Liga, and we could still win the league this year. In which case, job done, we move on. But, oh, it's... I got used to being the dominant team, and now we're not. And it's frustrating having to think again. And Camacho's going to get himself sent off now as well. Just to rub salt into the wounds. You always know when it's not going well, because players do start getting sent off. We didn't get many red cards when we were winning, but... Now we're not. Frustration starts to set in from both them and me. And we start getting red cards. Go on then, City. Do your worst. This has been a, a miserable match. I might show you a couple of matches against rubbish opposition tomorrow. Just so that I can have the fun of commentating on victories again. Because it's been a little while since you've seen us win a game. Which, there you go, there's a novelty for you. You worried we were winning too much. When's the last time you watched a Kev team win a football match? Probably yesterday, but I don't remember. <sighs> Miserable now. If you enjoyed that, please make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you very much for watching.